Good morning. Today you are you are going to read along with me uh, many scriptures because I think it's wonderful when we, when we can read the Word of God together. Don't you think so? Yes, amen. So don't get weary, don't get weary, but this is going to be somewhat interactive. And if you all don't mind, I'm going to put this mic temporarily here. So I have some maneuvering, <laughs> some room to maneuver up here. So let us pray. Father God, I thank you, Father. I thank you for being present here today. Father God, I ask you to let me decrease completely, to allow you to use me in the way that you have called me for this moment. Father God, I pray that those who hear the word and even share the word, oh Heavenly Father, that they would be transformative and they can also help others to know how to transform, to be on mission with you as their mind is set on the things of the kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We are going to have a two-part series. The main theme is shifting our mindset to be on mission with Christ. Today, we're going to talk about decisions that you need to make. And next week, we are going to talk about the posture that you need to be, to be on mission with Christ. This is a little bit different than what we normally would hear, because now we are talking about this thing up here, the mind, the will. Because if you don't make a decision, you cannot be on mission, and you will not be effective on mission. Amen? Bishop Glenn, um, he asked me to do this series at this time. I had shared some thoughts with him several months ago. I didn't even know anything about Alpha. But he said, you know what? I think what you share with me is proper for right now before we kick off Alpha. I said, okay. <laughs> I'm available. I am truly available. So. Pastor Kia has already described to you what the AFA initiative and teaching is about. So hopefully you all will participate in that as you hear this message about the mindset, being on mission for the Lord. We must have the mindset to do it because we live in the here and now and we think this is all there is to life. No, there's so much more. There's so much more in the spiritual realm that we don't see because oftentimes we don't set our mind to be in touch with what is happening in the spiritual realm because that is where the spirit of the living God operate. Remember, we must worship God in spirit. And he has put a spirit in each one of us if we choose to activate it, and it's going to come through the mindset, so that he can connect with us so that we are thinking about things of eternity and to be on mission with him. So that when it's time for that new heaven and new earth, as talked about in Revelation 7, we will be part of that and not the underworld. We don't want to be a part of that. So to get prepared for this great mission under the grace of Christ and the guidance of the Holy Spirit, we must shift our fixed mindset to a growth mindset. That is so, so critical. Oftentimes, we are fixated on what we want to believe and what we think is right and what, what we think is the best thing for us not on the things of what the Lord requires of us. We don't want to push that old mindset out of the way, but we need a new mindset. And there are certain decisions that we are going to make. So you're wondering, when I say mindset, Melissa, what are you talking about? 
A mindset is how we interpret and respond to each other, respond to God, respond to the world around us. That's a mindset. We make that decision. That is a free will that our Father has given us. How we re respond is based on our interpretations. The interpretations, they shape our attitude toward each other and even how we feel about ourselves. It's rooted in how we think, how we reason, and even what we believe, the mindset. Brother Scott, if you will put up slide two, the two mindset, thank you, it's already up. Carol Dweck, she's a psychologist, and you know because of the nature of the work that I do in ministry, I'm reading all types of things about the mind, why we think the way we think, but I always go back to the foundation of the word of God. Now her study was, was about a business perspective because she was looking at who achieve and who do not achieve as well. And she presented this two mindset uh, position. And I think she's done a great job in explaining that to us. So if you could follow along and see what she's saying, that when we have a fixed mind, we have a tendency to think we know everything, to think we are smart, but guess what? We avoid challenges, we give up easy, we don't like to put the effort because we think it's not worth it. We ignore useful criticism. can nobody tell me what to do. I know everything. We feel threatened by other success. We want what others want, but we don't want to do what others do. I always uh, listen to people because I'm at that mature age, but I'm still <laughs> have all my faculties in love life. People say, oh, I want to be like Miss Melissa. And I say, okay, sweetheart. <laughs> to be like me means that you have to be like all of me. The dark days the dark times, the hurtful times, the uncertain times, because they all shaped who you see. Because I made my mind up, I'm sick of the dark times, I'm sick of the unproductive, unfruitful times, and I set my mind to the things of the Lord. So be careful. Be who God has called you to be and set your mind on improving that. And how you do that as Carol said, it's a growth mindset. You want to grow. You want to grow. You want to improve. People who grow, which is evident by, they embrace challenges. They're not, they not afraid of them. They don't like them, but they know they must conquer. They must, must uh, push through. They persist in the face of setback. Persist in the face of setback. They see efforts as a path to being better, to master wh whatever it is that's trying to take them over. They also learn from criticism, and what I say, constructive criticism. We're not talking about being negative to people and don't give them options that they can consider how to improve their lives. And that's even in the body of Christ. Just because we're in the body of Christ and we may know the word of Christ, we don't have permission, permission to say truth without it being in love. Because sometimes we can say the truth, but there's no love with it. Find lessons. They find lessons and inspiration in the success of others. In other words, I like when people are inspired by what God is doing through everyone, even through what God is doing through me. I like other people. I still learn, but guess what? I know that I must check my mind, check my mind, and reset it to do the things to be successful. I love how she states in this quote that she has in her book, and this is a quick, quick summary of her book. Um, she says, your view of yourself can determine everything if you believe that your qualities are unchangeable, that is the fixed mindset, 
you will want to prove yourself correct over and over rather than learning from your mistake. See, that's a demonic spirit. I'm going to be honest with you. When you think you know it all, you have the answer to everything, and you cannot be corrected. That's where Satan like us, thinking we are smart, thinking we know everything, and we, when we don't. And he has control of our behavior once that happens. So we have to make a decision that we want to be the best of who we have been purposed to be. And sometimes that means doing the very things that are on the growth side face our challenges. Don't stop because we had a setback. Don't do those things. We have to have a desire to have that mindset. And if we're going to be on mission for Christ, it is a critical mindset that we must obtain to have genuine peace and fulfillment because truly only what we do for the Lord is going to last. I am not saying we are not to enjoy life here and now. I think it's wonderful that we reap the fruit of our labor. We can have nice things, but the key thing is don't let them have you. Don't let your position, your prestige, all these titles have you. They are temporary. They are temporary. They have no eternal value. Now, because we were created to be connected to the source of our being, when we talk about spirit to spirit, why do you think we have a spirit? That's how God wants to communicate with us. That's the connection. We must shift how we think about that, our mindset, so that everything negative does not control us, but we have a mindset of conquering it. And we're only going to do that when we are connected to the spirit of the living God through Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And because we need to be connected in that way, then we are prepared to be on mission with Christ. Or, or if you don't want to become that, you can be trapped and fixed on the temporal things. Learning based on your own limited understanding, because we all have limited understanding. We all have limited understanding. And because we have limited understanding and we don't set our mind on the things of the Lord, we can become self-delusional, self-centered, wanting to control everything that don't fit our way to the point that we start deceiving ourselves and we do self, I would say annihilating self with self-deprecating type things. In other words, because we want what we want, we will yield to temptation and desires that are harmful for our very soul because we want instant gratification, instant satisfaction, we want to get it quick. And when we do that, we are really operating with a fixed mindset because we think we know everything. And then we find ourselves being dissatisfied with this constant cycle of dissatis dissatisfaction and a loss of significance. Why? Because a fixed mindset will disconnect you from the Lord. It will not connect you to the Lord and you will lose your purpose and lose your way. And that's why self-centeredness, selfishness, and all the self-deprecating type things that we do to ourselves and do to each other because we're looking for significance, but we aren't gonna find it that way. We aren't going to find it that way. We were created to be connected to God, our spirit and his spirit for the unification of us back to the kingdom. It's amazing when I think about how the enemy thought that he had won because so many people turned toward him, his way. 
We see evidence of that everywhere. But because of this spirit that each of us have, it is the means that God brings about conviction to draw us to him. He didn't leave us. Even when we think we know it all, there's a convicting power of God's plan to draw us. That's just amazing because we are supposed to be unified with him. We were created by him. We didn't decide that we want to be here. We didn't decide anything. He decided all. And I love when I look at it, and, and if you would, Scott, go ahead and put, put up Psalms 139. And this is why I want you all to read, read with me on this because this is so powerful. I think of Psalm 139 as a complete way of knowing that we were wanted by God. We were not an afterthought. We were wanted by him. We are connected to him. And in this psalm, David is contemplating. It's really more of a prayer than when you think about uh, before a choir. It's really a, a prayer, a time of deep meditation before the Lord, just contemplating things. And let us, let us read what David found out and what we should know about that connection. And when that connection is in full force, our mindset starts shifting. Our mindset can start shifting because we have that conviction power of the Holy Spirit. So let us read, if, if you would, uh, that would be slide three and four, Scott, if you have it up there. We'll give them a moment, okay. Um, I hope everybody can see that. Let us, um, I said you're gonna be more engaged. If you have your own version of it, you wanna read silently, you can. But for those who desire to stand, let us read this together and just, just really contemplate on what we're reading. Contemplate on it. Psalm 139, and we are going to read verses 1 through 16. Let us read. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You hem me in behind and before. You lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is light as to you. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body all the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. Amen. Amen. Now, isn't that deep? Oh, my God, that is so deep. That is one of my favorite scriptures because when I had those dark days, I went back to find out, well, who am I? This was so clear to me. I was wanted. I was wanted before I even knew that I was a person. Oh, that is so powerful. That is so powerful to know that. And I love how David contemplated that, to know that no matter what we go through or whatever there is, if we set our mind on the things of the Lord, the comfort that we are seeking, we shall receive it.
Amen, amen, amen. David knew that. So don't deny yourself the truth that you don't serve a purpose, because you do. And one of your key purpose for us modern day disciples, and I say modern day disciples, is that we are to be on mission for and with Christ. That's what we are, because if we're not on mission with Christ and we stay in our fixed mindset, thinking we know things and just do a little thing for Christ and go back to the form of things, guess what? We're like what the scripture tells us, a double-minded person. And Scott, if you will put up James 1, verses 6 through 8, that should be my slide number 5. Okay, there we are. Again, you can sit or stand, but like I said, we're going to read God's word today. Let's stand. James chapter 1, verses 6 through 8. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. You either in or you out. We can't play games with the Lord. We cannot play games with the Lord. This, this mission that we have been called into modern day disciples is very important. But the mind, the mind must be made up. It must grow into that. It must grow into that. So we don't lose our way. Scott, I did not give you this slide because it came to me this morning by the Holy Spirit. See, that's how it is when you're up here sometimes. But I wrote this down, and I'm going to read this for you and just listen. Uh, this was so powerful when I thought about how we are designed to connect to God. We are designed to connect to God. We weren't designed for evil though we do evil because that's a choice, but we were designed to connect to holiness. This is in the um, book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 16 through 18. If you want to find that in your own word, I don't know if Scott can bring it up, but let me just go ahead and read for sake of time. And I'm going to be reading to you from the New Revised Standard Version. So we do not lose heart, even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure. Because we look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. Amen. Amen. So if we can just get that in our mind. We are so much more than what we see. I mean, I, I love when, when people just get that. It just, it just gives me a hallelujah moment. I often, when I counsel with people, share with them, if you don't know who you are, you will get in this cycle of constantly, constantly minimizing your worth. You are worth so much to a holy God. He came, he came down as Jesus, divine and human, to draw you back to him. That's your birthright. Can you believe that? That's your birthright. You have a birthright to be connected. But guess what? You have to. Press the button. Got so excited, my hands were squeezing. Okay, <laughs> so excited. We have to choose. We have to choose. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thank you, Moses. Thank you. Thank you. We have to choose and want to be reconnected. 
and that reconnection comes through Jesus Christ. Buddha isn't going to get you there. All the New Age stuff isn't going to get you there. The horoscope isn't going to get you there. There's only one path to God, and that is through Christ. I know the others sound great. That's just a hand clap on that, a hand clap on that. Because he's clearly showing us that even though we may feel affliction now, all the suffering that we go through, living in the here and now, that's temporary. That's temporary. I know it feels like an eternity, but when you think about people who even live to be 100 plus, that's like a, a drop in the bucket. That's, that's even temporary. And thank God for long life. I think it's a wonderful blessing to have long life. But no, the here and now is temporary. But he wants us reconnected back to him. That's the way it was planned. That's the way it always should be. But sin came. We know sin came. But he didn't give up on us. Thank God. He never gave up on us. The prophets all of the great leaders, God never gave up on us until finally he came himself and said, you know what? They are mine. They have a birthright to know what they are entitled to. But I want them to choose me like I chose them. See, we have to choose, and that's going to require what? A mindset to do that. As modern-day disciples, we are called to join Jesus on this mission to ensure that all, all know about their birthright. They have a right to be reconnected to whom they were always, should, should have been, excuse me, connected to, and that is the Lord. So we, as the modern day disciples, let us not forget that. It's not about just us getting our salvation on, as some young people say, but it's about helping others to know this great Savior. That's what the mission is about. That's what the mission is about. This is why we first must be connected. And when we are connected, we will get a sense that we have always been loved. He's always wanted us back, always wanted us back. So let's see what the word of the Lord tells us. And Scott, if you will pull up that slide eight, this is in the book of Acts, chapter 17, verses 24 through 28, if you have that. Amen. On your feet, let's read the word of the Lord. Let us read. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth, and does not live in temples built by human hands. And he is not served by human hands as if he needed anything. Rather, he himself gives everyone life and breath and everything else. From one man, he made all the nations that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their land. God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from any one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As some of your own prophets have said, we are his offsprings. I mean, you all should be just, just shouting. That is, um, that is wonderful. That is wonderful. And oftentimes we read scriptures like this and we're reading words, but if you really just think about it, how precious you are, how precious you are to a holy God, and look at how he sees you wonderfully, fearfully made, as David saw that and he came back for us. He kept coming for us, kept coming from, for us. And remember, he wants his offsprings back. He wants us back. But we have to choose. He's not going to force us. He first loved us, but he wants us to love him. You never want love to be 
forced upon anyone. Love has to be something you want to give, something you want to participate in. That's why we have free will and the choice. So our mission with Christ is to encourage everyone, all the nations, within their boundaries, all the people, so whomever we come in contact with, when we have an opportunity, we should tell them the good news we know. Whatever amount we know, tell them. If it's just simply, I'm saved. If you saw me before, I was a mess, but I'm saved. That may be your message for right now. Maybe you don't want to get deep into theology and all of those things. And I have to always remember that when I'm doing uh, messages because I'm seminary trained and I can go deep like my professors would want, but none of you would understand what I'm saying. That's not, that's not what this is about. It's not to impress anyone. It is about plain, simple language to tell the good news. And that's your mission, modern day disciples. That's your mission. I want to do something. This is kind of a little fun, but I guess oftentimes we as Christians, some of us can get caught up in thinking, I don't think that person is interested in the Lord. I don't think we need to say anything to them. You know, they're so far out there, they don't want to hear nothing about God. So Scott, put up the slide number nine. This is the one with the, the guitars. And, and there's a little, there it is. <laughs> now, I'm not a big rock fan, but I do like some rock. And I'm not so old that I don't enjoy life. I like music too. I dance too, okay? So, but I always make sure it's honorable before God. Let me ask you something. Who is that? Okay. Would you, if you saw him on the street and did not know him, tattoos and all, all darn, and especially when he had his dress and, and the other things, do you think that you would have gone up to witness to him? Would you have had hesitation? I know you would, Maxine, because that's that evangelist in you. You'll go witness to someone if they had a dog costume on. You say, I can get that one. <laughs> I want you to listen to something. Scott, if you can cue up that, um, okay, let's just listen. We're going to cut out all the, the ads and stuff like that. My mother wanted me to be off the streets, which brought me to the California Boys Choir. This was like a really prestigious thing. And, you know, we trained all day and night. And I got sick. I had the flu, and I got sent to this infirmary where this other kid was. He and I were in this room together for days, getting checked on and getting better. And uh, one day he just started talking to me. He's like, um, do you know about Jesus Christ? And I said, well, I've, I've heard of him, but what, you know? And he started to tell me, this is, this is a kid now. He starts telling me all about Christ and all this scripture and things and was, you know, just talking to me and reading to me. And it's quite interesting because you have these two like young boys just sitting there talking and having this great conversation about God and love and Christ and, and all of this. And that night, I can't explain it to you, but the presence of God was in the room. Not just, I'm talking about something really heavy and thick and the two of us felt it. It was something that just kind of came over us. And we were both crying because whatever this presence was, was so overwhelming that it just, it just hit you in your spirit. That was it. it. No explaining, no. And I knew that it was, you know, we were having an experience with God that was a, a, a true experience the 
spirit, the being, the power that created me was right there with me. I didn't need to go to anybody to deal with God. I didn't need to, it was just right there. It was a personal experience. Amen. 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 I mean, when I hear that, that almost brings me to tears because how often we miss people who really need the Lord because of what we think they may say or do. Now, I don't know where Lenny uh, Kravitz walk is today, but I did a little research, and they said that he tells everyone he believes in Jesus Christ. Now, wh whether he practiced his faith the way we do, does that really matter? The point that he came under conviction because someone, someone, a child, a child will lead the way sometimes. Another child told him, and that conviction of the Holy Spirit came so full upon him that he knew something was transformative about his life. He knew something had happened. See, that's that drawing. His spirit came alive because the spirit of the living God came into his presence. Now, that has to grow and to be nurtured, and I pray to God that is what is happening in his life. But look, someone was on mission, and they told what they knew at the time when they had an opportunity. That's us, modern-day disciples. That's us. That's us. That is so powerful. When, when I saw that, I said, I hope they're going to run me out of the church. And they said, Melissa, and hard rock and all that. I like music, okay? <laughs> Whether it's rock or not, okay? <laughs> the point is, that young man felt, felt that he needed to plant a seed. He knew the Lord the best way that he knew the Lord. And he wanted to tell somebody. That is our responsibility. We must have a mindset to do that. Because what? Lenny is the Lord's offspring, just like we are his offspring. And he needed to be drawn back home. That young man, he didn't tell us who he was, but he was in the hospital setting. That young man understood enough the message of the cross Jesus lived, died, was resurrected for us. And that spirit in Lenny Kravitz came alive and knew something had touched him. I pray he's on that search to have a fuller understanding of it. So don't think it's likely that our mission it's just something minor. It's just only what Sister Maxine and the evangelism team does. It's all of us modern day disciples. Everyone needs to know this and everyone needs to set their mind on this great mission to reclaim our birthright, not only for us to tell others how to reclaim theirs, let us not have people thinking like Esau did. He was so hungry for food, earthly things, not saying that it's wrong, uh, to have earthly things, that he sold his birthright. No, that's in Genesis. We're not going to go into that. But we sell our birthright when we do not reconnect with the one who gave us that right. So the mission requires us to not only to be faithful, available, and teachable, but to give of our time, to give of our resources, and that includes your money, and to use your talents and your gifts. Because while we don't meet in home churches like they did at the beginning of uh, the early church, we have bu buildings that must be kept. We have missions that we go on, and those people must be kept. 
So that requires something of us, resources, time, talents, and money. God doesn't ask for all of our time, all of our resources, all of our money, but give of all of those cat categories so that the mission can go forward in so many ways. But that's going to require a shift in your mindset about what you possess, about what you own, about what you earn, about your talents, about your time. That's all part of the mission. So as we prepare some people who I voluntold, <laughs> as we say, but no, they graciously accept. I want each of you here, while I work with them, uh, to think about what is it that the Lord is speaking in your heart that you need to release for this great mission? What is it that's in your mind that is confusing you or causing you to not have a firm, stable mindset to grow in Christ for the mission as a great modern day disciple? So just think about that for a moment. I want Serena, Stephen, Sharon, Favor, and Favor to come forth. You all were wondering, what is this up here? Mindset. I wanted you to be clear, clear. Set your mind on the things of the Lord. Mindset, mindset. You have to su surrender. Change your thinking to become an effective modern day disciple. So with each of these letters, I have those who have volunteered to give you scriptures, and I'm going to call out the letters, and they're going to come forth and give you a scripture. There are copies in the back if you desire them, or, or if they're not enough, we can give them to you. And Scott, if you would put it back up there, the mindset. And he's also going to show the actual scriptures. When you think of mindset going forward, you're going to be different because it's about decisions that you must make to be on mission for Christ until he returns. M. M. Motivated. Philippians 4, 6, and 7 tells us, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. I. Inspired. Romans 15, 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. In never quitting Corinthians fifteen through fifty f Corinthians fifteen fifty eight. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. D 
dedicated, never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. S. Serving. First Peter 4.10. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. E. Enduring. Hebrews 12, 2 to 3. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. T. Transforming. Romans 12, 2. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God will is. He is good, blessing, and perfect will. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, team. Thank you. Give them a hand. Give them a hand. Wonderful, wonderful. What you saw there, all ages, to include myself, all gender, different backgrounds, ethnicities, that's heaven. That's heaven. And that's why the mission requires a mindset for Christ. And we have to make decisions. M, what was it? I, and D, S, E, T. Amen, 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 amen. Father God, I thank you for how you have allowed a message to come forward to allow your people who are assembled here to hear it with purpose, plain truth, so that they will know that the decisions they make and the attitudes that they hold are necessary to be on mission with you. Father, grant them peace. Allow your Holy Spirit to bring them under conviction, Lord, that they will do an inventory of their lives and ask, what is my mind set on? Am I going to be motivated? Am I going to be inspired? Am I going to be never quitting? Am I going to be dedicated? Am I going to be serving? Am I going to endure? And am I going to transform as I set my mind to grow with you on this great wonderful mission as you call us back to you in Jesus name. Amen. Amen.